we do and I think that shows with the way that we talk to our patients and the way we manage people. Um, there's no hierarchical type structure for us. Yes, I'm the executive director, but in fact we're all here to do a job and that is to make sure that the patients have a satisfying experience within the hospital but also have the outcomes they want. But we need to make sure that they feel comfortable whilst they go through that process because it's a scary thing for people to go through and it's scary not just for the patient but for the family so having to watch them go through it. So our role is quite important in making sure that those people feel that they're being cared for. Morning Anne. Morning Kimberly. Hello reception. Oh lovely, thank you. Bye. Good morning. You're here for admission this I morning. I am, yes, thank Rachel Bennett, thank you. It's always an early start. We start at just gone quarter to seven. But it's the people, people that I work with, people that I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, because everybody's so different. Uh, you never know who's going to come through that door. Um, and the people I work with are great, and that, that is really the main reason that I'm here. My colleagues, we, we, we're a really close team. Everybody looks out for one another. I wouldn't still be here after 26 years if I didn't like it. people are going to be very nervous, especially the inpatients coming in for surgical procedures. Um, but it shows in all manner of ways. Some people can be quite upset when they come in through the doors. Some people are very quiet. Some people are very nervous. It manifests itself in lots of different ways. So it's just trying to be a friendly face. Somebody for them to see as they come through the doors. Somebody smiley. Yeah. I've worked here four years. I mean, I just want these people just <laughs> talk to everybody. Good morning, sir. Reception staff are fantastic. You get on well with everybody. We work very closely with Doug. Um, he's a star, really. He's great. Whatever we need, he's always there. Um, from carrying people's bags, taking people off in wheelchairs, he takes all manner of parcels and boxes and you name it, and Doug will do it for us. He's, 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 he's just one on his own. Yeah, he's great. Mr. Hall, sir, you can take you to your room. Yeah, we're going up to Chester 31. You've been in the hospital before? Uh, no. No. Yeah, we're going up in the lift to the first floor. We're going straight forward and just going round here to the left. You watched the football last night? No. No, you're not a football man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, who's your support? They're quite chatty. You can chat all the way down to the left, straight through to the room. You usually find that sometimes by the time you get to the room, all the people that's nervous, they've, you've gone past that, you know, you can just um, overcome the nerves and they feel more relaxed when they get into the room. Flat screen TV as well. Flat screen TV, it's a new one that too. Well, my name's Doug, I'll show you around your room, show you where everything is, how everything works. It's um, just a 31 for you there. Morning, Rachel. Yeah. You okay there? Fine, thank you. How was your journey over? It was uh, a bit nerve-wracking, but I don't think that's uh, I think it's understandable on a on a morning like this. But uh, as I said when we spoke in the clinic, um, what's going to be happening today is uh, we'll have a chat now about the surgery. My niece is Dr. Petz. will come and have a chat with you and answer any questions you might have, and then uh, she may sometimes offer you a, a pre-med if you're a bit nervous. Have you found doing the exercises? Um, yeah, still fine with them. Hard work and all that, but uh, as I said, the, uh, the, the stronger the muscles are beforehand, then the stronger will be uh, and you'll recovery afterwards. Yeah. Uh, and then it's the case with the next few days, after about sort of 40 hours, the physios start doing some active exercises, and then we're usually aiming to get you up out of bed by about sort of Thursday or Friday, we start getting you moving a mm. bit more. As we know, it's, it's what's called the GANS periacetabular osteotomy of your left hip, and then that's where I need to get you to sign your signature there, if you would do for your consent. Yep. And then the final thing I need to do, which is part of normal routine, I need to put a mark on your leg. Uh, anybody going to, to surgery for an operation on a limb has to have an arrow put on there before we do it. So we'll do that yep, now. that's fine. Yep. Okay. So, jumped off a window ledge and um, for whatever reason, Daddy didn't quite catch her. 
even if she doesn't complain of pain, give her neurofen. It's an anti-inflammatory. Yeah. So give her five mils three times a day. Okay. That will help bring down the swelling faster. Her ankle looks okay in the X-ray as well. It's really small. It's probably a hairline crack there, and uh, it will heal on its own. You wouldn't need any surgery or anything, but. Um, um, you need to be under the care of orthopedic surgeons for that. Oh, look at that! A special bandage. Thanks very much. All right then, take care. Just come to give you the timazepam. Good to see you again. Nice to Hello. see you. Um, what we're doing today is really to check if you've uh, got any further polyps in the bowel, and if you have, we'll take those away. Right. So you've signed your consent form, mm -hmm. you've been seen by the anaesthetist, yep. and you've been pre-assessed. Yep. It's all fine. No problems there. So we'll, we'll get you upstairs and get on with that fairly shortly then. Right. Okay. I won't Good. say I'm looking forward to it, but yes, uh, I'll be there. <laughs> Good <Okay. laughs> right, so I'll just go to see Mr. Case and see whether he's ready to send. Okay. okay. very privileged in that we have a lot of consultants here that have world reputations and it's important that we keep up to date with new technologies and ensure that the care that we deliver and the services we provide our patients is up to date. So we've been very fortunate of being allocated uh, seven and a half million worth of investment in the hospital to make sure that what we're doing is current. A friend of mine's daughter had a leg lengthened. I went to visit her at Alder here and saw the physio department there and you know, it wasn't too good. Um, and a lot of kids there from the hospital Alder here, 200,000 a year, most of them go through the physio department. And from my point of view, I've spent two and a half years out of the past four doing physio mm -hmm. in some of the best places in the world or in England. Mm -hmm. And I found it tough for these kids. They were coming back from major operations, um, things like cerebral palsy, all these different types of things, sure. trying to give them the best environment that's not particularly clinical but child friendly. Yeah, it was set up by uh, myself and my wife Rachel mm -hmm. um, and it's designed to enhance, build, physiotherapy department for children. And so we've still got a, a bit where to go before we can start building the first one. Mm -hmm. but it's something we're passionate about and excited about doing. is um, Mr. Clayson will start his list. He'll ask us to take you to theatre, so I'll accompany you to theatre on the bed, and then you'll be handed over and the nurse in the theatre will look after you. You'll have everything set up while you're asleep, okay, and then you'll wake up in the recovery room, and that's the next thing you'll know. Have a seat and I'll check your temperature, and then we'll get the doctor to have a look for you. So you have a seat there. I mean, it woke me up this morning at about 5.15, 5.30, and then it's extremely unpleasant. Sore throat as well. Yeah. Does it hurt when you swallow? So you have a bit of an ear infection there and a throat infection as well. Shall I read them out to you? Well, I was played, played the whole game and I came off the pitch um, and noticed a pain in my, uh, just the, bo the bottom of my thumb and my wrist. So I told the doctor, the club doctor, and he, uh, he examined me and uh, he noticed uh, clicking in my wrist. So I uh, came in this morning and he, he uh, referred me to Mike Hayton, the hand specialist. He's an ex-player himself. He understands uh, what we're about and you know, he understands that we want to play as soon as possible and get on, get on the pitch again. How about it here first? Are you a player? Yeah, yeah. Which team? Uh, sales sharks. Oh. Yeah. You come in, everyone's smiling, make, makes you feel really welcome. All the operations I've had have been in and out. Keep it there. Didn't have to stay over, they were great, they looked after me and did a great job. Right, one more. Yeah, no problem. I watched the other night the uh, 
Barbarians. Barbarians, yeah, played. Uh, is that match. a country or? A it's an invitational team. So like, oh, so um, it's a mix of players yeah, all, from different. All the top players. Ooh. Really, I'm pleased to say at this stage that your X-rays of your of your wrist and of your thumb all look to be okay, uh, and also with your clinical examination with a full range of movement, relatively pain-free. I think that this clicking and clunking that we can feel is probably not an acute injury, and, and sometimes um, you can get clunking, clunking and clicking in your wrist just as a consequence of normal ligaments flicking over bones. But what I suggest we do is um, you're going to be monitored by Dave and the medical team at Cell over the next week or so, and if there's any yeah. doubt about it whatsoever, we will uh, we'll see you again. We'll consider getting an MRI scan. But I just think at this stage, we probably don't need to get an MRI scan in view of you having a full range of movement and relatively pain-free. But great. Good job. Okay. Cheers, Good Mark. to see you, Cole. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Cheers, Dave. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks. Throughout the year, we're put on different events for the staff, and it's really because, you know, this hospital is successful. It, it does take pride in what it does. But the management team also need to recognise that it's not us that actually does that. It's the staff that delivers that. And so this was our way of saying thank you to them for all their hard work and for everything they've done throughout the year. And it was great fun. We all had great fun. I don't mind wearing a silly outfit. I'll do anything if it means to have a good laugh. <laughs> Rachel's a, a, a young lady who unfortunately has been born with a, a very shallow hip socket and if we look at her x-ray here we can see how the, the head of the femur or ball of the hip joint is not fully covered by the socket. Um, what that results in is the uh, Rachel's experiencing increasing pain in her hip, uh, there's increased pressure on the ball of the hip joint and she's therefore at risk of getting early arthritis. So what we're going to do today for Rachel is, is an operation uh, known as a, a GANS osteotomy and what that involves is a specialised technique where we are going to divide the bone all around the hip socket and having divided that bone will then be in a position to rotate the hip socket over the, the ball of the hip joint. If one looks at patients in her situation as she is at the moment then there is a high likelihood um, of her developing arthritis at an early age in her life and requiring hip replacement. The um, follow-up studies that we have and, and this particular osteotomy um, there are currently available sort of 10 to 15 year follow-up studies show us that 80% of patients that have had this procedure done at 10 to 15 years following their surgery 80% are still functioning well uh, with relief of pain and return to a good quality of life. Uh, so in a young patient, this is certainly uh, a better option than um, leaving the hip to just wear away and end up performing an artificial joint replacement at a, at a young age. I've been doing my private practice here for about 18 months to two years. Uh, I've found, particularly bringing something like this to the hospital, the staff both in theatre, on the wards, uh, in the physio department, keen to uh, embrace new procedures and and support my practice so uh, it's it's gone well. I think firstly people want uh, speed of access to the most appropriate consultant to help with their care. Uh, obviously they do enjoy the, uh, the sort of hotel facility that a private uh, hospital offers but most importantly they want uh, ease of access, um, a comfortable patient experience and access to high quality medical advice and uh, equipment and facilities. Mr. Kinder uh, is a patient of mine uh, who had uh, cancer surgery uh, for uh, bowel cancer some years ago and his wife uh, underwent a, a camera examination of the bowel uh, by one of my colleagues uh, about a year ago now uh, and it was because of a family history of bowel cancer and she was found to have several polyps within the bowel and one of those polyps turned out to be uh, cancerous and she was referred to me for surgery. She had an operation about a year ago. Uh, she's done remarkably well. 
and she's come today for a camera examination uh, to check that she hasn't developed any further polyps within the bowel because if you have had polyps before uh, then there is a, a risk of developing further polyps within the bowel. Polyps can develop into cancers, uh, that fact is fairly well established. And really what we want to do is pick these things up at a very, very early stage. And the camera examination allows us to uh, pick these things up and also to treat them at the same time uh, before they develop into anything else. Um, so it's, it's basically early diagnostics which is very, very important you know, in this group of patients. I've worked here for eight years. Um, I'm a general and colorectal surgeon based at Stepping Hill in Stockport, uh, but I do my private practice here at the Alexandra Hospital. It's a very large hospital that offers a lot of the facilities that I require as a, uh, for the type of surgery that I do, in particular a high dependency unit, an intensive care unit, and a lot of the diagnostic uh, work such as a CT scanner, an ultrasound scan, and endoscopy facilities. So it has all the kind of requirements that I need uh, to do uh, to carry out my practice uh, and it's a very friendly place to work. 10 to 12 I went into the theatre and I was back in the room at maybe half past 12, 25 to 1. Uh, the polyp he removed, he said it didn't look uh, anything sinister, anything nasty but he has sent it away to be analysed and that I will uh, be back in a two or three weeks uh, to get the results from it but he seems quite happy about it. What are my plans now? Go home and have a nice cup of tea, something to eat. Jake, would you like to come through? You point to where it hurts the most for me. Just make it easier for the doctor to have a look at your wrist there. Still, please, Jake. Good lad, you're doing really well. There's no broken bones there, it's purely ligament damage there. struggling with my weight since I was 11 so it's like 22 years now through cognitive behaviour therapy and all the work they did I've been healed of the binge eating disorder the depression's under control I've already got arthritis in some of the joints in my body I'm also currently because of my family situation at risk of heart disease and diabetes it's an amazing opportunity that's going to give me my life back Wow, this isn't like any hospital I've ever been in. When I came today, a porter came and collected me and then brought us up to the room and you got a guided tour. <laughs> it's like, this isn't a hospital, <laughs> you know? Come in. Hello. Hiya. Heather, nice to see you again. Hiya. How are you keeping? Okay. Are you Good. ready? Yep. Okay. Um, I think I saw you uh, about a month or so ago. You, um, did, yeah. you discussed the various options at the yeah. time, and you've opted to undergo uh, adjustable gastric banding. banding. Is that still the? Yep. Are you haven't changed your mind. <laughs> no. Okay. How did you get on with the liver diet? Uh, really well. Okay. Fine. And, uh, and has it made a difference to your weight so far? Yeah, I've lost about ten pounds. Oh, that's great because you know that would translate to shrinking the liver down for us, you yeah. know, and make the surgery a lot easier and also less complications. So came in today and all being well I should be able to go home tomorrow providing there's no medical problems. I'll see you soon. Okay, okay. thank you very much. Right. Hi Rachel, good, good morning. morning. Now, you tried your elbow crutches didn't you for the first time yesterday? Yes. So what we'd like to do this morning is just have another practice on them, get you out walking up and down in the corridor and just have a look at exactly how that hip's moving today. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. When I first got the crutches, I wasn't sure. I was like, well, am I allowed to step on this leg? Am I not? And it was quite painful and quite tiring at first, um, mainly because of my scarring. I couldn't stretch 
uh, my back and my leg, it wasn't used to doing as much. If my muscles wasn't exactly right, I wouldn't have been having this operation this week, um, so I've worked really hard. Yeah, I think Mr Clayson gives you quite a rigorous exercise regime, doesn't he, he does, to get yeah. you he does. as good as you possibly can do before you come into hospital. Being told I'm going home in a couple of days, so I'm quite excited to go home and getting up and about and feeling myself, because now obviously I've had all my tubes out and um, I just feel more like myself now. But I think the reason that you're doing so well is that your motivation, pain-wise, you, you're pretty comfortable, we've, we've got your pain well controlled and also we're making sure that we get into you regularly and you're practicing on your own as well as with the physio in the set sessions throughout the day. Right Rachel, I'll see you this afternoon. See you this afternoon, bye. thank you, bye. Absolutely brilliant. Once I press that buzzer and I need something to hear within seconds, it's great, I really can't fault it. I'd definitely recommend to come here if you could. There's never a time where I've seen a member of staff you know, down or disrespectful towards a patient. You know, they're great and they make you feel you're important, and that is the main thing. Hi everyone, okay, I'd just like to introduce you to our special guest this afternoon. It's Wellfield School Junior Choir, and they're going to sing some Christmas carols for us this afternoon. Hope you enjoy. Okay. 